Welcome to Mucho TV, where we learn from one another and grow. My name is Janvier Nahimana. I'm with a special guest, Patrick Sullivan, the CEO of Halifax Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to Mucho TV. My first question is, what the role of Chamber of Commerce on doing business in Halifax? Uh, but what we do at the Chamber of Commerce is we try to help our members. We're here to help our members. Our members, as I mentioned, and many people are very surprised to hear that over 80% of our members are small businesses. They're businesses of 20 people or under. Um, we have over 250 not-for-profits uh, as a part of the chamber. What we try to do is we, we try to raise awareness about those businesses. We try to help them increase their top line. So their top line may be their revenue or their sales or their fundraising in the case of a not-for-profit. We help them to manage their expenses by providing them with discounts on, uh, on various offerings, with benefit plans, um, so that ultimately they have more money at the bottom line. Uh, and uh, whether you're a business or a not-for-profit, typically that money will go to investing in the business to support the growth of the, uh, of the business. So we're here to support uh, our members and to help them you know, in some cases, if they want to get bigger, we're here to help them get bigger. So how COVID-19 impacted doing business here in Halifax? Well, COVID-19 was a bit of a shock, obviously, to, uh, to all of us. So, uh, you know, I think back now to, I think it was around March 13th, it was a, if that was the Thursday, uh, and we had a board meeting. And at that board meeting, which was two hours, two and a half hours long, two hours long, I think, um, we spent maybe five minutes talking about COVID-19. And by the next day, we had shut down all of our events, and we do a large number of, or a number of large events, we had shut down our events uh, by the next day for only three months. How, how naive we were then thinking that we can just not do events for three months when here we are now five months later still not doing events. Uh, and, uh, and for us, we then ultimately were able to transition to working from home on March 17th. Uh, but for many of our members, it was a very, very difficult time and still is a difficult time. Um, many businesses were ordered closed. So if you were a restaurant uh, with dining in, if you were a massage therapy place, if you were a physiotherapist, um, I'm trying to think of all the businesses that were ordered closed. You know, if you were those kinds of businesses, you were shut down uh, and went for almost, well, over three months, uh, almost three months, I guess, in many cases, um, without any revenue, uh, without any customers, uh, in a restaurant's case, they may have had to throw out, you know, thousands of dollars worth of food that was in the, in the restaurant at the time. Uh, so it was a very difficult time for many of our members. Uh, so we, we were working very closely with our members to provide them with the information that they needed to participate in some of the programs that the, uh, that the, the primarily federal uh, government was offering at the time. So what they plan to help small businesses in this difficult time? What was the plan or what is the plan now? Yeah, what's the plan now? Because now uh, it's, we don't know when it's going to end. It's still uh, some small businesses are still struggling. How would yeah. you plan to support them just in this difficult time? Yeah, well, I think I think our plan to support them. I mean, it's changed slightly, but uh, over the last number of months, we've really tried to educate our members on the programs that they should take advantage of. Uh, so, in early days, that may have been the CERB, uh, which provided two thousand dollars for individual, uh, whether they were a business owner uh, or employees. Um, it may have been the Canadian Emergency Business Account which was a program that allowed them to get $40,000, a $40,000 loan of which $10,000 was forgivable to support the business, to keep it running, to educate them about the wage subsidies that were available so that they could continue to employ uh, many of the staff that they, uh, that they had um, who they were trying to keep uh, kind of on their, uh, on their payroll. Um, and so that was in the early days and for the first two or three months, we're, we're now in much the same place, which is 
there's still a lot of confusion about the programs that government is offering. There's still a lot of worry that there aren't enough programs specifically for smaller businesses, which in many cases used to take their salaries, if you will, in the form of dividends uh, or, uh, or just retained earnings. Um, so many of those businesses were unable to access some of the funds that the government was providing. So we were helping them to, to learn uh, about those programs. We were also doing webinars. So we were doing three, four webinars a week where we would present uh, speakers. So whether that would be an employment lawyer, so you could learn, you know, sadly for many businesses, they may have had to learn how to lay off staff members if they had no revenue coming in. And then hopefully three or four months later, they had to learn how to bring those staff back uh, and how to do that the right way. Um, so we, we've been working with, with members all the way along, uh, trying to both educate them and, and help them get through this, uh, this difficult time. Uh, you manage uh, Chamber of Commerce and uh, what, which advice can you give to manager? Because it's a difficult time uh, mentally, how to keep strong me mental health just in this difficult time as a manager? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. I mean, mental health is really, you know, maybe it's a bad way to put it, top of mind, uh, but uh, you know, it's, it's, it's very, very important that we think not only of our staff, but also of ourselves at a, at a time like this. Um, you know, I, I worked from home for many months. Um, the problem with working from home is it's great to be able to walk downstairs or, you know, or maybe into another room uh, to be able to work, but you also need to be able to walk away. And sometimes you can't walk away when work is so close at hand. Uh, so you need to take those breaks. You need to, um, you need to appreciate as a manager, and we all need to appreciate that people are living in different situations. So of our staff, they, you know, we had here, we had parents who had young children at home and yet we were expecting them to work from home eight hours a day. It's simply unreasonable for us to expect that um, when someone has young children at home and daycares are closed and schools are closed. So you need to be sympathetic. You need to be empathetic you need to appreciate the different working conditions that people have. I, I misspoke a moment ago and said, you know, I was able to walk downstairs. I was lucky enough to be able to walk downstairs. Um, but, you know, there may be people who live in a bachelor apartment with somebody else. Uh, you know, how, how do they do the work that they need to do in order to, uh, uh, you know, sort of put in the, the time that their employer may expect. So I think we as employers need to understand that it was a difficult, unique time. It still hasn't ended, you know? I mean, and when I say it still hasn't ended, in our case, we have employees whose children still have not returned to school because school hasn't started yet. They still haven't returned to daycare because they were unable to get into the daycare because only 50% of the spots were available. So we need to understand as managers and as employers that people are going through difficult situations and we need to ensure that we, um, we're empathetic and we, we work with them. You know, our, in general, our, you know, most people would say their employees are, are wonderful employees. We don't wanna lose those wonderful employees in a difficult time if we can avoid that. Um, so we need to work with them during this time to ensure that we can all managers, employees, and the business can come out of this at the other end. So Halifax is a, a welcoming city and uh, we had tourists coming to visit our, our city and uh, also just uh, get a, a time to enjoy our restaurants and uh, hotels. So this time of COVID, how airport convention center hotels are doing and what's the plan to bring tourists again to Nova Scotia or to Halifax? Yeah, um, well, it, it's uh, again, a bit of a difficult question because they're not doing terribly well. Uh, you know, hotels, I've talked to a number of hotels that are, that are off almost 80% uh, 
uh, in revenue. I talked to a hotel the other day that would normally employ 120 people and they've got 15 people right now uh, working at the hotel because there's simply not enough, not enough people. You know, there's very few people, I think I saw a survey the other day that said only 3% of Nova Scotians have traveled across, have traveled outside the Atlantic bubble. Uh, and uh, I think it's only about 20% of Nova Scotians that have gone outside of Nova Scotia. So Nova Scotians aren't leaving Nova Scotia and New Brunswickers, Prince Edward Islanders are not coming to, uh, to Nova Scotia uh, in large numbers. And of course, you know, given that we have a 14 day quarantine, people from Ontario uh, and, uh, and other areas are not coming either. Uh, so we're, you know, we're in a difficult situation for hotels, for anyone that depends on tourism, we're in a difficult situation. Restaurants are doing slightly better than they were, but we all, you know, COVID is not going away for a long time. So we need to maintain that physical distancing at restaurants uh, to ensure uh, that, uh, that there isn't the spread of the, uh, the disease. So restaurants are at best case operating at 60 to 70% capacity. So to answer your question directly, you know, what, what can we do? Well, we as Nova Scotians can invest uh, a little bit, uh, you know, particularly if you're, you know, if you're a, an employee who was working in downtown Halifax and now is working or was working from home, maybe you saved a little money on parking. Uh, maybe you saved a little money on your, uh, on your, your transit, uh, transit fees. Um, if you can afford it, it would be nice. Uh, if uh, you took, you and a friend or a, a significant other and and went to a restaurant and spent a few dollars at that restaurant or enjoy your evening downtown stay at a restaurant stay at a hotel sorry uh downtown my daughter um we were babysitting her two dogs the last two nights as she took her uh her two children and stayed at the delta hotel in dartmouth and then stayed at the hotel halifax uh last night and took her two children um uh, at a very discounted rate and took them to the pool uh, and was able to show them a nice time by swimming, um, you know, at those two locations. I mean, that's not something everyone can, can do, but even walking around the waterfront uh, or taking a trip, taking an ocean cruise by traveling on the ferry, uh, you know, from Halifax to Dartmouth or from Dartmouth to Halifax, those are all things that will put some money back in the economy a little bit. Uh, to hopefully offset some of the losses that many of those businesses are suffering right now. COVID-19 impacted strongly African descent communities. Uh, how does the, the province provide support to them? Well, that's a good question. I mean, uh, I, I can tell you a little bit about what we're doing at the chamber uh, to, uh, to assist with that. I, I think you know you would need to ask the government a bit more about what they're doing. I know you've talked in the past to Minister Ince, uh, and you've talked to uh, to other folks, and and they're you know they're they're certainly uh, making some efforts. Um, over the last few months, what we've done is we've uh, we've focused on um, we're a business organization, so we've tried to focus on the business side of things. So we've promoted um the uh the businesses that are aligned with the uh, with the black business initiative uh we've uh tweeted about those businesses we've promoted those businesses to try to try to encourage uh nova scotians and haligonians to shop at black owned businesses um we we know we can do more we actually sent one of our staff to bbi to work with bbi um, when they didn't have the staff available to update their uh, their listing of businesses uh, to to assist them so that we could again further promote uh, promote those uh, those individuals. Um, I know that uh, Godigan Street recently had uh, uh, a number a couple of weeks of take black the block. Uh, it's kind of hard to say, uh, but uh, um, and we actively promoted those initiatives to encourage. Haligonians to go to those locations and again purchase from the local establishments, uh, purchase from the local businesses, and to buy local. I think I tweeted out the other day: Amazon doesn't have a distribution center in Nova Scotia. Uh, it's you know we don't need to support Amazon. We don't need to support Wayfair right now. We need to support Nova Scotian and and uh, African Canadian businesses for sure. So um, I have a, just a, a question which may maybe uh, I could ask before COVID-19. Um, there is a, a Chamber of Commerce 
the Canada Africa Chamber of Commerce. Uh, does the Halifax Chamber of Commerce has a partnership uh, with uh, Canada Africa Chamber of Commerce because we have a big port here in Halifax and uh, um, doing business with Africa now we know that Africa now is growing and we would like that to connect Canada to Africa. Um, Halifax Chamber of Commerce that have a, a collaboration with Canada Africa Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, I, I don't think we do at this time, uh, but we have many relationships. I know we have uh, we have a relationship with the uh, with a couple of chambers of commerce in uh, in Scotland because Nova Scotia is New Scotland. But I, I think we'd be enthusiastic about if you know the folks at the African Canadian Chamber of Commerce. I would be pleased to uh, to talk to them. Um, as you, I'm sure you know, Af Africa, uh, as you just mentioned, Africa is is a significantly growing population, um, and in fact is expected to be um, in the next 20 years um, the center of economic activity, or, or one of the centers of economic activity, uh, sort of uh, bypassing uh, China and India uh, in, uh, in terms of population growth. So uh, very, very large opportunity market for all Nova Scotians. Um, we have African immigrant here at Halifax, and they are skilled. And uh, how do you think that um, in partnership with the Halifax Chamber of Commerce, they can be uh, ambassadors and also connectors to, for doing business with Africa? Yeah, well, I, I think they could be uh, for sure. Um, I mean, we'd love to meet uh, if there are people who are interested in, in going into business or in partnering um, with, uh, with businesses and, and introducing us um, to additional markets, we'd love to, love to meet those people. We'd love to have them participate uh, in some of our events. Uh, we do, uh, oh, well, I should say we did. Uh, we did over 105 events a year. Um, we're now, of course, doing many of our events in an online capacity, uh, but we're beginning to do in-person events again. Um, some of those events cost money. Many of those events are free. Um, if people are interested in joining those events, please just mention my name. There would be no cost uh, to attend those events. Um, and it would be an opportunity to meet people from the chamber uh, and meet other people from the business community in Halifax, um, it, particularly if they're a new, uh, a new immigrant. Uh, so would love to, uh, love to be introduced to people. Um, we are almost at the end of our interview. Uh, can you tell us about Chamber 101? Oh, okay. Chamber 101. So that's exactly where I'm going. I suppose Chamber 101 happens about once a month. Uh, and Chamber 101 will provide you a bit, a bit of information on what the Chamber does, what we are, um, and, uh, and it is an opportunity for networking. Although we've been doing it online, we're now beginning to do it in person again. It's an opportunity for some networking and some business building with other members of the, uh, of the Chamber community. Halifax was strong before COVID-19. Business was growing. We saw uh, convention center, condos everywhere now. And we see that also uh, now construction restart again. What's the future for Halifax in coming days? We know that we still have uh, COVID with us, but what's the future for Halifax in the coming days? Well, well, I think the future for Halifax and for Nova Scotia is very bright. Uh, I think it's a real opportunity. I mean, the, the growth uh, that Nova Scotia and Halifax have experienced over the last number of years has been primarily due to immigration. Um, we need to continue that immigration, but I think the opportunity for immigration is even greater. We have a very safe location here in Halifax and in Nova Scotia right now. We have one of the lowest rates of COVID in all of North America and in some cases around the world. So it is an opportunity for people to come to Nova Scotia to bring their families um, and for people to build a life, build a career um, in this community. Um, and you know, I, I think it's going to be an area now that people will continue to likely work from home. Uh, I think if it doesn't matter where people live, how many people from Ontario or Quebec or even the United States uh, or other areas of the world would like to come to Halifax and work here 
video video wise uh, or on Zoom uh, in order to uh, to to build you know their family or build their career. So I think there's a real opportunity for Nova Scotia to be a special place, um, maybe more special uh, than it's been in the uh, in the past few years. So I think the future is still very very bright. Thank you for coming to my show and. Uh... I hope that it's a start for something that we will try to organize many times to uh, connect and open conversation uh, to the, our community. And it's why I call it Let's Talk. All right. Perfect. Thank you, Javier. Re really appreciate it. Thank you and have a nice day.